Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be the last Linux tutorial inside of this C programming series. <laughs> so if you're sick of Linux, don't worry, it's, it's almost over. <laughs> the very first thing I wanted to teach you how to do in this video was how to create your own directories. So if we do print working directory, you can see we are in the YouTube directory. And if we say ls, you can see that there's absolutely nothing in this directory. Well, I'm going to teach you how to put a directory into the working directory. So the way to do that is MKDIR, which stands for make directory, and then you give it a name. Now when we say LS, you can see that there is a folder or directory inside of the current directory or the working directory. We can go into that directory by using CD test. And now when we say PWD, you can see that we're in that directory. Let's go out of that CD dot dot. That goes to the parent. And now I want to talk about auto completion because this is going to be one of the most helpful things, I promise. So to explain auto completion, I am going to make a couple directories. Make dir. So every single space is a new directory. So I'm making two directories here, pumpernickel and kombucha. Now, when you type CD P and then press tab, it'll automatically fill out pumpernickel for you. <laughs> it's awesome. I want to show this a little bit more, so let's make another directory. We are going to make a directory called plump. Now if you type cd pl, well, there's only one directory that will match this, and that's plump. So it's going to work. When I press tab, boom, there you go. The problem comes up when you don't type in enough characters to make it unique. So for example, if I delete down to the p and press tab, nothing happens. If I press tab again, it'll list all of the options that match that. And now we have to pick which one we would like. So I could add you and then press tab and goes to pumpernickel. Onyx, would you quit your drinking? Okay, I'm sick of your subliminal advertising. Ah, just cause you're my sponsor doesn't mean you can interrupt every single video. He obviously doesn't care. That's it for auto completion. It's gonna be super helpful once you have thousands of files and you just need to type things real super quick. The next command I wanted to teach you is called the echo command. So it's really simple. All it does is take whatever you give it and it will spit it back out in the console. So we could say echo and then in double quotes, we could say something like, hello world. Then when we press enter, it just spits it back out to us. And you're probably thinking, wow, that's completely useless. Well, we can actually do some pretty cool things with this. For example, we could do something like this. And now we can use a greater than sign to output that to a file called output. Now when we say ls, you can see that there is a file output. How do we see the contents of that file? We get to use a new command called cat. So we can say cat output, and you can see that the output is in that file. So whenever you need to redirect some text into a file, you can use this command right here. Let's try it again, echo pizza. And we're gonna put that into output. Now when we say cat output, the only thing outputs is pizza. Where did hello world go? <laughs> well, this actually overwrites everything in the file. So you have to be super careful when you do something like this. If you want to append to the end of the file, meaning keep hello world and just add to it, you have to use two greater than signs. Just like this. <laughs> now, when we say cat output, there's a bunch of garbage in there. That's because I messed it up a couple times, but <laughs> you guys get the point. Let me try it again without messing it up. We're gonna put, put this into output and then cat output. And you can see pie is right there, ready to be eaten. <laughs> Pizza cat, yum. <gasps> the greater than symbol can actually be used with other commands. For example, I could say ls dash la, and then output that into some file, let's say ls output. What would that command normally output? It would output this. And if we see what's inside of the file using cat, we could say ls output and it's the exact same thing. So if you ever need to barf the output of some command into a text file, that is how you can do it. 
Sometimes when you output a file on the screen like this using cat, there's just going to be way too much text for us to look through. There's actually some commands to help us with that. Just to show that, I'm going to make the text in the file super, super long by appending this again, and then just running that a couple times. So now, oh, when I say cat ls output, look, it's so much garbage, holy cow. Like, how am I supposed to read that? Well, the command you want is called less, because we want to see less of the file, you see? Then all we got to do is say the file name, ls output, and it only displays a little bit. Just to make it clear, I'll clear the screen, and then let's do it, ls, ls output, there. And now you can actually scroll using your arrow keys. <laughs> Pretty sick, I know. <laughs> the trick is, how do you get out of this trap? <laughs> That's for you to find out. I'm just kidding. You just have to press Q. And absolutely last thing I got to tell you is if you're ever in a program that just keeps running and running and you can't get out of it for some reason, all you got to do is hold Control and press C. So I know that was a lot for one video, and to be honest, the last couple videos have been a lot of information. So do your best to learn it all, but don't freak out if you don't get it all figured out by the end of the day. It's okay. I will still be here on YouTube to teach you on this video. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to click subscribe. And if you need all of these commands on Note, be sure to download my notes, which I will link at the end of this video. And yeah, that's all. So be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Which, by the way, we are going to be talking about the basics of C. So we're going to start talking about how to actually do things in C programming. <laughs> yeah.